Howdy, folks. Time is precious and oh so fleeting. Yet we have so many interesting people to meet and remarkable things to see. Join me, won't you, for the Ultimate Mike Polk Jr. Show. It starts now. Ah, beautiful Cleveland. There's nothing I enjoy more than the hustle and bustle of this city. Well, not right here, obviously. Let's actually go somewhere else. This is kind of sad. Come on. Okay, this is still not great. Let's try one more place. Well, can you frame it so it looks like there's some people? Are there people now? Good. <clears throat> ah, the hustle and bustle of downtown Cleveland. It has a unique vibrancy, and I'm happy to call this city home. And one of the things I love most about living in Cleveland is the sense of tradition in our communal experience. For example, we are just now entering clam bake season, which is one of the four major Cleveland food seasons. Those, of course, being fish fry season, rib cook-off season, clam bake season, and, of course, Christmas ale season. It's here sooner than you think, folks. Now, to be fair, there are some regional traditions that not everyone is bananas about, and one of them is fast approaching. I'm talking, of course, about Sweetest Day, a regional pseudo-holiday that is celebrated throughout the Midwest and apparently has its origins right here in Cleveland. But how did this controversial holiday get started? And why do we still celebrate it? To find answers, I hit the books. And by the books, I mean Google.com. Here's what I came up with. Sweetest Day, AKA Low Rent Midwest Extra Valentine's Day. A lot of people love it. A lot of people love complaining about it. There's a popular theory that the regional holiday is simply a dubious commercialized money grab invented out of whole cloth by the predatory greeting card and candy companies as a cynical plot to compel people to purchase their wares. Spoiler alert, turns out that's a pretty heavy handed interpretation of the origin story. Sweetest Day is celebrated annually on the third Saturday of October. It is a unique American holiday, both because its origins have no basis in religion and because it is a largely regional affair, primarily celebrated here in the Midwest, portions of the Northeast, and a few areas down in Florida for some reason. Most likely because so many Midwesterners brought it with them when they retired down there after getting sick of driving in this. The anti-Sweetest Day crowd tends to refer to it as a Hallmark holiday, probably because that rolls off the tongue better than saying American Greetings holiday, which would make more sense since AG is based here in Cleveland, where Sweetest Day actually started. But in reality, neither of the giant greeting card companies really had anything to do with the origin of Sweetest Day, though I'm sure they're not complaining about its existence when they get that sweet, sweet mid-October Rust Belt sales bump every year. Okay, Sweetest Day haters, get ready for some disappointment. Because as it turns out, rather than being rooted in commercialism and corporate greed, history tells us that Sweetest Day actually began as an act of genuine charity and altruism. I know, right? It began here in Cleveland in 1921, when Herbert Birch Kingston, a local candy maker and philanthropist, decided he wanted to bring happiness to the lives of the less fortunate who often were forgotten. Kingston and others distributed candy and small gifts to orphans, seniors confined to their homes, and other down and out people in an effort to show them that someone cared. Kingston didn't even intend to start a holiday, but it became an annual tradition all the same. It was officially dubbed Sweetest Day in 1922 by a committee of 12 confectioners who took Kingston's idea and ran with it by distributing over 20,000 boxes of candy to newsboys, orphans, old folks, and the poor throughout Cleveland. That's according to an article from the Plain Dealer at the time. Over the years, the Sweetest Day idea of spreading cheer broadened to include everyone, from sweethearts to family members to co-workers and even casual acquaintances. And yes, like most holidays, this one has inarguably become more commercialized over time. But for those of you who are angry about Sweetest Day because you think it's dumb or because you forgot about it until the last minute and now you're standing in line at a Circle K gas station, panic buying an overpriced stuffed bear that's holding a heart to bring home to your partner so it looks like you tried, it is important to remember that for whatever Sweetest Day represents now, its original intent was rooted in charity and grace for people who were particularly in need of a kind gesture. And so, in the spirit of the season, I'd like to say Happy Sweetest Day to everyone and enjoy this virtual heart from me to you. And then just make it come out of my hands. Can we do that? And it goes towards them. Yeah? Cool. Actually, let's do a second. Let's do a second one. All right, that's probably good. Right? That's good. Well, there she is, folks. The Terminal Tower. She's not the tallest building in our skyline, but she's the crown jewel. 
Perhaps you've noticed that the colors atop the terminal tower change frequently. And maybe you've always wondered who gets to choose those colors and decide when they get to change. Or maybe you haven't. Well, luckily, I'm curious enough for both of us. So to get some answers, I went straight to the top. At the top of the tower, do you get it? I wrote that. Yeah. Have you ever looked up at the terminal tower and wondered why they decided to illuminate it with a certain color? And also, who exactly are they? These modern day lighthouse keepers, who are essentially responsible for declaring that this is what our city cares about right now, based on their color choices. That's an awesome responsibility. And as it turns out, there are but a select few people trusted to wield this awesome power, including these two Matthews, who were kind enough to invite me into the heart of the beast for a terminal tower technician tutorial. Once we review applications, approve them, and typically schedule them at a computer, we can schedule up to a year out. Anything that's very Cleveland-centric or charities. There's definitely set dates. So it's always like the Christmas holiday season, any Browns game on a Sunday. We have apps on our phones. Only yeah. a couple people have them. You won't be surprised to learn that they receive plenty of personal color requests from people and organizations. Some they're able to accommodate, many they cannot abide. Gender reveals, unfortunately, we can't light up for. So Ixnan gender reveals, and I fully support that. Thank you. <laughs> the gents were even kind enough to offer me a first-hand look at the 44th floor, where much of the lighting magic happens. And I'll tell you, there are worse views of our city. At this point, I decided to ask my gracious hosts for a minor indulgence. Earlier that day on the What's New Facebook page, I asked our most cherished viewers what color they'd like to see on the tower and why. Fortunately, the mats were down for it. Gentlemen, thank you so much again for this opportunity. On behalf of all of the What's New viewers who commented, thank you for this. Karen White from Middleburg Heights requests the color pink. Her daughter is going to have her first baby any day now. Can we do a pink? Is that I think possible? we can manage that. This is for you, Karen White. Karen! There that's it is, for Karen. you. Denise Stefanik Looker and Amy Ribley Janos both want brown and orange for different reasons. Yeah. Ish. That's about as close as oh, we can get. I see some brown in there. That looks oh, totally there brown I to me. I definitely see some brown in there. Tammy Kowalsik, Ginger Pittock, all wanted red, white, and blue for Memorial Day. Can we do that? Here we go. Oh, there it is. That's for you, ladies. Lisa K. Suttle of Holmesville would like pink and yellow. Those are her My Little Pony colors. What do we got? There it is. Oh. That's for you, Lisa and My Little Ponies. Thanks for watching What's New. Finally, this was the most liked one. They wanted red and white for Poland, who uh, has shown never-ending support for Ukraine. There it is. it is. Thank you, Poland. So if you happen to be downtown the other night and were wondering why the terminal tower lights seem to be short-circuiting, fret not. That wasn't a tech issue. That was just the good-natured guardians of an iconic Cleveland landmark, allowing our viewers to briefly set the mood for our entire city. This is Mike Polk for 3 News. May I ask you something personal? Do you have a Cleveland accent? You might not think so, but you probably do. See, some accents are more noticeable, like my flawless British accent, for example. Hello, governor. Fresh in a drink for you. Chim chim chiroo. I've traveled abroad. But some accents, like the one we have around here, are a little more subtle. I did a hard-hitting investigation into the Cleveland accent. And I'd like for you to take a look at that right now. That's a tease. Hey folks, do me a solid and read this sentence out loud. Go ahead, I'll wait. Great work. Now, if you sounded like this. My mom got my dad a can of pop. You might be from here, but you could be from anywhere. But if you sounded like this. My mom got my dad a can of pop. There's an excellent chance you're from Cleveland. Whether you realize it or not, there is indeed a Cleveland accent, and you probably have one. It's a bit nasal and marked by a distinct A that makes cat sound like cat, and a variant of O that makes pop sound like pop. According to Edward McClellan, the author of How to Speak Midwestern, our particular dialect is classified as the Inland North accent. Cleveland is very distinctive from the rest of Ohio in its accent, that backwards A and that, that long, drawn out O. Oh, the Cleveland accent is, it's very much, a, it's a Great Lakes accent. I've determined that my four coworkers with the heaviest Cleveland accents are Mark Namick. I've been pounding the pavement of Cleveland since the age of 13. Dave Jadowski. And it really is amazing what we can do. Betsy Kling. We could have friends running the prompter, doing the camera. And most aggressively, Lindsay Buckingham. 
You know, I think that's a perfect thing, Jasmine. We have a big garage. I'm trying to find a way to put together the perfect sentence to distinguish whether or not someone's from Cleveland. If they just read the sentence, you can tell if they are from Cleveland or not. One of the famous ones, actually, to detect an Inland North accent is too hot for hockey. <laughs> I can hear that, yeah. I had the perfect phrase. Now it was just a matter of deceiving my coworkers into thinking I needed them to shoot something else on Zoom so that I could catch them off guard. This is a uh, promo for the YouTube page, and we're ha they're having everybody me have everybody do lines for it. There are plenty of reasons to check out the WKYC YouTube page. And here now, these are a list of reasons. This is where we get wacky because it's too hot for hockey today. 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 Like what this was, was I'm doing a piece about the Cleveland accent. Um, I should have known better. You hid your Cleveland accent pretty well. <laughs> Any words in particular stick out for you with a Cleveland accent? Fire. What are his other trigger words, Lindsay? Fire. Because they don't say the I, they say Fire. You don't feel like uh, sensitive or, or insecure about having a regional dialect. No, when you're bald, Mike, you're not sensitive about many things. You do hear about your Cleveland accent sometimes. I do. When I go to conferences, people make fun of me when I say, should we get a cab? Should we get a taxi? There's no shame in sounding like you come from where you come from. Cleveland, you have an accent. Your mom has an accent. Your dad has an accent. Our accent might not sound particularly elegant or refined. My dad <laughs> caught the cat eating my mom's lasagna. But it definitely sounds like home. This is Mike Polk for 3 News. Back to you guys. Well, folks, it's been a lot of fun tonight hanging out with you here in this beautiful, special city of ours. Sure, it's got its share of flaws. But speaking personally, I think it's those little imperfections that make it all the more special and real. In fact, my personal philosophy is to not get hung up on the negatives and to focus on the, well, you'll see. And then you'll play the video right after I say, you'll see. You hear it? Right after I do that, you'll play the video. Cut all this part out. Cool? All right. Let's get a beer. A recent online poll has ranked Cleveland the most apathetic city in the nation yet again. When reached for comment, the mayor responded, who cares? You want your weather forecast, Cleveland? There it is. Rain, snow, gray, hot. It's a mess. Why the hell do we live here? Authorities say reports of the recent rise in crime in downtown Cleveland are greatly exaggerated. We here at the... Hey, hey, hey! Hi, I'm Mike Polk, and people often ask me how I managed to love my scrappy hometown so much, despite its many flaws. I tell them it's really quite simple. All you have to do is... Focus on the positive in Cleveland. Why waste your time with negativity? Sure, our weather's pretty bad, the crime rate's not ideal, but there's hardly any traffic and the real estate's a steal. So focus on the positive in Cleveland and make it like a place you'd like to be. Cause when you focus on the good, then good is what you'll see. And Cleveland's looking mighty fine to me. The beach is closed due to high bacterial levels. The beach is closed. Sounds like nobody's drowning today. That's a great way of looking at it. Keep your fancy cities where you have to try too hard. The bar's a little lower here, you see. I'm not especially handsome and I'm not especially smart. But in this town, they still put me on TV. Focus on the positive in Cleveland. You'll be amazed how lovely life can be Cause when you focus on the good Then good is what you'll see And Cleveland's looking mighty fine to me Cleveland's looking mighty fine to me Should we do it again? Nah, I'm sure that's fine. We're moving on. Moving on.